Bring everyone this is Khan and in this lesson we're going to talk about SQL injection vulnerabilities. These type of vulnerabilities are basically database injection flaws that can be used for communicating with the database that this application is using. A remote attacker can exploit these vulnerabilities in order to take over the database. These are actually found where application are using database for retrieving data like you can see here this form is taking user id and is returning the information for that specific user like you can see that first name and the other name is shown for the user with id1 the application is basically using database to retrieve this kind of data and there's a my SQL query being used in the backend. Now, if we are able to include our payload in it and able to retrieve data, it's called the SQL injection vulnerability. In the next lesson, we are going to learn how to detect these kind of vulnerabilities in applications. Greetings, everyone. This is Shahar Khan, and in this lesson, we are going to learn how to detect SQL injection vulnerabilities. We, here we got a test application that is taking the user input in id parameter and it's communicating with the database and searching for user information now if we enter one here it will return information of user with id1 this tells us that this application is using database and it's communicating with it using a specific query we can try injecting our payload here and for detecting and SQL injection vulnerabilities we have to inject our input or payload into any area that's communicating with the database so in this case this is the one communicating with the database we have to enter a single quote here single quotation mark and we have to see if that returns any error and you can see here we got a syntax error here it says you have an error in your sql syntax this means that our single quote quotation mark is actually communicating with the query or is within the query being used this means that we have successfully injected our payload into a query that was being executed it's a database injection attack so that is how it works we have to use some kind of single quotes or double quotation mark in order to detect if there is an error if we see any kind of syntax error or any other it's likely to be vulnerable to a SQL injection vulnerability in the next lesson we will learn how to exploit this vulnerability In this lesson, we will learn how to exploit a SQL injection vulnerability. First of all, we have to detect how many number of columns the application is having. So we go to our test application here. I'm using VWA vulnerable lab for demonstration. We recently we got our error here by entering a single quotation mark. As you can see here, we got the SQL syntax error here and we can see that it's surrounded by single quotation marks so we have to enter that now in order to find how many number of columns this item is having we have to enter order by order by one and we have to end it by the sign So this will check if there is a single column. We will increase the number one by one and see if we found any kind of different error. Anything other than this. Now this should load the page normally. As you can see right now, the page is loaded without any kind of error. This means that we are properly doing the method and we are properly
checking our payload so no error occurred this means the first column exists now we have to check this the second one so no error yet let's try increasing more and by using order by three we got an error unknown column tree in order clause this means that the third column doesn't exist so that means the site is having two columns as we got error on three the first two exist so that's how to detect columns and in this lesson we're going to learn how to detect vulnerable columns while exploiting SQL injection vulnerability. In our previous lesson, we learned how to find number of columns available. We found that the site was having two columns as we got error on the third. By using order by two, we got a positive response and the page was loaded normally. This means that the site is having two columns. Next, we have to use the union function, union command, union select all, and then the number of columns. Now we have to remove the number of you have to invalid intern invalid number we can use the minus sign now as you can see that we got two numbers here we got the same number we enter here in the site HTML or sites body If any of these number appear here that means that these columns are vulnerable now we got the same thing here this means that both columns are vulnerable so we can use any of them to grab any value like we can find what user it's running on and what was the database name and all that so that's how to detect a vulnerable column if the value entered up here reflects back then it's a vulnerable column in the next lesson we will learn how to grab values using this technique